Hello everyone, welcome to more One Piece. This is episodes 550, 551, and 552. Last video I was doing like at the very last minute. My video on Patreon actually went up late because of like the when I recorded it. I was I was so I was struggling so much to get those videos done. And now I'm feeling extra motivated to get my videos done earlier because I hate that feeling when I'm late and it's just my brain isn't working properly and I'm stressed and it feels like the walls are closing in. I don't like that feeling. So I'm doing this video much earlier. I'm actually doing this video like the day after I did the last One Piece video. So I'm doing it really quickly. Um, so everything's gonna be a bit fresher on my mind. I'm also feeling fresher. It's gonna be great. I'm excited um, I also made a post recently and if you're watching this on YouTube that post would have been a little while ago now because on patreon I'm quite a bit ahead of YouTube um, But uh, I made a post that I was saying like the fishman island arc like I'm vibing with it You know, I'm I'm quite liking it um, Because I am I'm, I'm having a good time with it now obviously um, we're coming towards, you know, the second half of it, and, like, it feels like the stuff that we just passed was, like, cool introduction stuff to the arc, and then, like, a flashback, and pe I think people generally, no matter what, kind of like Oda flashbacks, because they tend to be, you know, impactful and have some good story, so... I think if there's going to be stuff that I'm, I and the fan base are not a big fan of, it'll be in these upcoming bits, I feel like, because now we're starting to get to the points where it's like the characters are, you know, going to be go coming up against the the enemies and, um, and you know, we might have some face-offs and they might drag out those face-offs because uh, I think the pacing of this arc apparently isn't great. I, I'm, I'm telling you though, genuinely, I kind of feel like so far I haven't really noticed any any pacing issues, you know? Um, well, like, not any major ones. Not more than I expected. I kind of give One Piece way more leeway than I give other shows because I went into it hearing about so many pacing issues that sometimes there will be some some pacing issues that in another show I would be like, well, this is pretty egregious. But with One Piece, I'm like, ha <laughs> ha, oh, One Piece, you silly, silly goose. So... Let's see what uh, happens in these upcoming episodes. But all, all you need to know for me going into this is I, I'm I'm having a great time and I'm really enjoying this. Um, make sure to support this video if you can. Liking the video, commenting down below, and subscribing to the channel. That stuff helps me out a lot, especially since I am a small channel. Um, I would really appreciate your help. Um, and go to my Patreon account if you want the full-length reactions as well as early access and exclusive videos. Um, that really helps me out as well. So, um... Yeah, let's just, let's just jump. Oh, yeah, and you can join my YouTube membership down below. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of this on auto, autopilot, and so I'm missing a lot of information that I normally give, but it doesn't matter. We're jumping into this. This is One Piece episode 550. One Piece. Woo! Okay. Recap Rubik's. Here we go. Uh, if you're new to the this channel... The recap Rubik's is a Rubik's Cube that I do while the recap is going on, and my goal is to beat the recap. And if you're new to the channel, hi and welcome! Hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, damn. That's, uh, that's that one. I mean, I gotta hand it to this arc. The recaps aren't that long. Maybe the, the stretching of it is, the pacing is, but recaps are decent. Candy Factory Town. It's such a wild name. I remember seeing imagery of like one of the One Piece arcs has like a like a big cake, and this is Big Mum's, you know, protection place, her factory. I'm seeing a connection there. The bones of big fish. Oh, I don't love that. Oh my god. Just biting your way through the ground. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I like him. <laughs> well, now your actual hope is probably the straw hats, but I do believe in Fukuboshi. Mm. 
Oh no. Well, this is impressive right here. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh no, here we go. Look at that pretty girl. So... Whatever he says at the end is like his current power level. <laughs> so Dosun is like the high power level. <laughs> oh no, Dokan. Oh shit! Bokan? He's changing. Zuhan, oh my god. It's funny how quickly they explained the power level system. <laughs> like, I like that I'm watching it and I'm going like, wow, he's at Gaban right now and it's all gibberish. Like, I don't know what it means. But the show somehow convinced me to be shocked by that. Uh. <laughs> oh? Yeah, be careful, man. He's drunk and holding a sword. Oh, Jesus! Oh my god. He's just killing his friends. Maybe I don't like this guy. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa! Alright, well, Zoro is definitely facing this dude. <laughs> oh no. Okay, he's got camouflage. Oh! Uh, I kind of like the animation of it. Just keep slashing. You might hit him. Okay. What's the what's the deal with the bug? Did they accidentally hit him? Oh my god. Jesus. <laughs> they accidentally beat the shit out of him. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a weird scene, but kind of funny. Oh god. He said bring as many as we have. He's not just gonna pour them in, is he? This is an intervention, Hordy. Oh my god. Jesus. Oh, is that Chopper? Oh, he's short. <laughs> Chopper's one might be my favorite, and that's saying something. <laughs> Damn, we only saw three seconds of that scene? Mm. Um, no. Yes! Follow that instinct. Mm -hmm. it's... I love these three. <laughs> if I was to go off of their character designs, I would have told you that I didn't like them. But they're some of my favorite characters in this arc because of the way they're written. Oh! Uh, I don't want to. I don't want us to have to fight a random animal. <laughs> I'm sick of having to fight random animals in these arcs. Oh my god. What? Don't hold it towards him, you idiot. He's drying him out? 
What? What? Really? Oh! Oh, Jesus! That's fucked! Mm. Aww. He wants to. God damn. But now he's just overdosing so hard. Oh my god. Oh. The fuck is going on? Whoa! What? What? Okay. Is he locked in now? Fully transformed? Oh my god. The animal instincts can just sense something's wrong. Okay. Got a fresh design? Oh shit! You know, I I kind of like it, cause it makes him visually distinct from Arlong. Not that he wasn't already, but even more distinct. He doesn't just feel like Arlong 2.0 now. Oh shit! All right. Okay, well, Hordy's taken a hell of a lot of um, energy ster steroids, and now I do like his design. Now I think the like the white look with the white hair and and all of that does look pretty cool. I think my only concern with that is like maybe I feel like it'll turn Hordy into so much of like a monster that he'll be just l a less interesting character. Um, because I do actually like Hordy now. I know I've I've heard some people aren't a big fan of Hordy in this arc. Um, as the as the villain, I so far have liked him as the villain. But if the direction that they take him is he sort of like becomes less intelligible and um and more of just like a incredible Hulk, I I I think I would get less interested in it because I also like as some context for me, I tend to not like sort of transformation into monster type stuff. I mean, basically, you can find a pretty easy through line of, like, what will Gent like, generally. And a lot of the time, the less, like, the less human something makes a character, the less interesting it is to me. I really like v villains and, and fights and stuff that really properly bring out the humanity. Um, where characters will... Uh, we'll be fighting and we'll be having a thing and humanity is like a big through line of it I think that's like way more interesting and way more fun So that's why I don't tend to like when they're just fighting animals or monsters or ghosts or whatever Because I I don't have that through line of humanity and I just find that you know Then it feels like it's just about the fighting which I don't care about as much um, But when there's like morals to it and stuff, it's it becomes really great So that's why I like you know, I feel like my hero academia a lot of the time in that show, uh, from, you know, people can have their different perspectives on that show, but a lot of the time, it is kind of about the humanity of the fight. And then some fights in the series that should be less important, but they're solely about humanity, um, are, like, quite good. Like, I actually really liked, in My Hero Academia, there's the Gentle fight, where there's a character named Gentle, and he's not, like, a major threat. He's, he's actually, like, kind of a very minor villain. Um, but his thing was all of all, you know, human flaws and, um, and the fight wasn't even like a dangerous, like life or death fight necessarily. Um, it really wasn't at all. Uh, but it like, because of the human emotions that went into it, I really look back on that fight super fondly. Um, and, uh, there was another example that I was going to give. Um, uh, oh yeah. Hunter Hunter. Right? I love, love, love Hunter Hunter. And I know, I know a lot of people know about the Chimera Ant arc. And if you don't know, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But, um, but it's essentially there are, you know, these ants um, that, you know, uh, become dangerous because when they eat, their offspring gets the traits of whatever they eat. So they eat more and more 
powerful things and become stronger and stronger and obviously uh, basically kind of taking over the world right and it's an incredibly long and complex arc of the anime it's the longest arc in the anime it's the most complicated one it's it's really <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on right i thought when we started that arc i thought oh this is what the long arc of the show is going to be and i i was really not looking forward to it because it was all about like the main villains were monsters essentially they were these creatures but the arc is about them becoming more human and so they they are gaining these human flaws as the arc goes on and so the arc gets more and more interesting to me until by the end i'm just enthralled and I really loved that, you know, it made it so much more interesting to me and it, and it, and it's like an incredible arc. So Hunter Hunter like nailed that for me. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I'm reserving my judgment on this. I don't know what's going to happen here. Um, I, I just like to tell you guys what I, what I feel about media in general. Um, and it doesn't, and if sometimes when I don't like stuff like this, I don't think it's bad. Like if they are going to fight like an, a big animal or whatever, or a big monster, I'm not going to say like that's bad writing or Oda shouldn't have done that or whatever. I'm just telling you like why my reaction might be less interesting to you guys. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I liked, uh, I liked seeing some of the Hordy's crew, although I wonder, um, you know, like what how that's gonna go i mean i guess i imagine it's probably going to be the straw hats are splitting up to those different towns to save the different towns so um you know so and then luffy's gonna go directly for Hordy or have Hordy come to him or whatever so um so i can kind of see what they're setting up there they still have luffy and jimbei fighting and they showed like a little bit of it in this episode but we made absolutely no progress on it i wonder how long that's gonna stretch out now because it feels like now they're making it the luffy and jimbei fighting is the equivalent of luffy getting caught between two buildings where it's just like this character is now he's hit a standstill and is making no progress in the plot they keep doing that with luffy <laughs> where they just can't have him make any progress because they don't want to like rush to the end of the arc or whatever it's like Oda wants to have Luffy be the sort of character to rush to the end boss but he also doesn't want the arc to be rushing to the end boss so he tries to find like a middle ground where Luffy really wants to but he can't for one reason or another um but I can't wait for him to to do that and for them to get past this Jinbei moment because I think the Jinbei moment is really nice but it's done it's done now <laughs> I'm, I'm done with it so uh we'll see um also that squid spear that you stab it into someone and then it sucks out all of their blood or whatever is fucked up that's insane all right let's move on to the next episode this is episode 551 here we go we go we go all right Recap Rubik's. Here we go. Can I complete it this time? Alright, there's cube one complete. Now, let's try to do the second cube. Also, if you're new to this channel, there's two cubes. And if I complete both of them, it's called a two cube cap. And if it's a two cube cap, that generally means the recap is too long. <laughs> okay, didn't quite complete it in that time. But I mean, I got pretty close. That was quite a long recap. He's very strong, but for how long? He's kind of put himself on a time limit now, hasn't he? I feel like Neptune's gonna have a dope moment at some point in this arc. We'll save him, don't worry. As soon as Jimbe gets out of our fucking way. Mm. There's my girl. One of my girls. <laughs> I don't feel guilty for this guy. <laughs> oh my god. Sure, Hoshi's like so sweet that I feel like if you were just like a nice guy, she'd probably like you. 
if you were just a decent person. Haha, <laughs> you with extra syllables. <laughs> That's a good joke. <laughs> Interesting animation. <laughs> He's laughing. <sighs> what does that mean? Aww. Still protecting them. Oh. Now she's gonna have to watch his men die. Jesus, man. Here's this dude. Daruma, I think. Alright, they've all gathered. So maybe the Straw Hats won't have to split up. You don't need any more, dude! God damn. It's really... He's really trying to make it like Gold Roger's execution. He's closer to Jesus, though. Okay. Are we gonna be making actual progress now? Oh, she's worried. And looking at the grave as well. You know what you're doing this for, Shiroshi. Who you're doing it for. Who's that, Sanji? Yeah, that's Sanji's jacket. Cool. I guess that makes sense. I was thinking you'd pick up a frying pan or something, but jacket is nice. Actually, I think it should have been a cigarette. Anyway. Uh-huh. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I don't think it'll work, but... Oh, no. Hordy's just gonna kill him. Oh! Jeez, it pierced through him. And through everything. And it continues to pierce. Jesus. It's gonna smash into Nezumi or something on the other side of the world. Or Spandam's gonna get a water droplet through the skull somewhere in the world. Oh god. Jesus! And then it just falls into the water. <laughs> Returning to the earth. Okay, alright. Here we fucking go. Mm -hmm. I believe in you guys. I think you can do this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's great coming from someone who I think lied about the assassination of your leader. Pretty good. Beat up these useless animals. Fuck them. I like this music. They're gonna use Fukuboshi and the others as an example of how strong they are. Oh! Jeez! Oh! Oh no, I don't want them to just be defeated like this! Oh no! Oh! That's a fucked up way to beat these guys. Yeah, we're gonna need these straw hats, I think. Or Shirohoshi to summon some Sea Kings. Damn it. I'm sad about that. I mean, it makes sense why you would lose to them. Fuck! Damn, man. Not gonna be much, um... Not gonna be much discussion here. There's, there's not really much to talk about. 
But it's sad. I like Fukuboshi. I like Ryuboshi. I like Manboshi. They're cool characters. I um. I wanted them to kind of show off a little bit. And I mean, I guess their version of showing off was defeating the sea monsters, but I wanted to see them show off, you know, at least taken down one of one of the guys, but it seems like they didn't take any of them down because they're trying to use the princes and as an example of like, this is basically the height of what Fishman Island has in terms of warriors. I mean, I guess you have Neptune as well and you have Jinbei. Um, but it's, it's hard to know where Jinbei stands in this, because, like, if, not in terms of morality, but in terms of strength, because we know he's very powerful, and we know he's a warlord, but then they were also talking about these princes as if they're, like, the best warriors that we've got. But it's like, I wonder where Jinbei is considered, because I, I imagine Jinbei's, like, the warlord of the sea. He was offered that position, in my mind, because... He was very strong, but he, but you know, you kind of have to be strong, but also be a pirate and be like in the public eye and stuff. These princes aren't in the public eye, so they're not even in the running f to be a warlord, really. I don't think. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where Jinbei stands. I wonder if Jinbei would be able to defeat any of these. I feel like Jinbei would be able to take at least one of these officers. Would he be able to take Horty? Probably not. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna like. I know Luffy is most likely going to beat Horty, but I don't know how. Unless in this arc he does whip out fourth gear. I don't, I really don't know actually now. Because it, they, they have shown Horty to be extremely strong uh, at his current form. So I, I really don't know. I wonder what's it going to be. No, I feel like it's got to be like Luffy using Shirohoshi's assistance somehow. Luffy using the assistance of Sea Kings to do it. I feel like that's the, the power up. Because I think in most arcs, Oda likes to give Luffy a power-up of some sort, you know? Um, like, he... he, he I, I guess, like, in the last arc, his power-up was kind of Haki, you know? Like, throughout the Summit War, he was learning Haki, and then when they needed a, a moment for Luffy, he would use, um, uh, you know, Conqueror's whatever. <laughs> Conqueror's Haki, or whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Um, he would use that, right? And then in the previous arc before that, what was before Summit War? It was, um, uh, was Thriller Bark before Summit War? Because that's crazy to me. Like, Summit War was fucking long. So if it was Thriller Bark, we, you had Nightmare Luffy and Thriller Bark. Um, and, uh,. What do you have before that? I can't remember. Jeez. Like, it's... My... Like, was that... Before that, Water 7? I guess it must have been, right? So, if before that was Water 7... I feel like I've missed one in there. But if before that was Water 7, yeah, you had both second and third year in Water 7. So, uh, like, Oda is loving to give him power-ups in each thing. I feel like he'd get one here. But I, I, I think it's more likely he gets the... Uh, gets something to do with the sea kings or something to do with being underwater maybe he does eat an energy energy steroid i don't know i don't think they'd want to go in that direction but i i'm just saying it right now because it's possible that he like accidentally ingests an energy steroid and we get like luffy pat more powerful through that but i don't know if that sends the right message <laughs> that he can only that, that people with energy steroids could only be beat with energy steroids i don't know um but yeah anyway I also thought Vanderdecken in this episode, I mean, he's such a pathetic, awful, like, dude, but at least I'm finding some of his jokes funny. Like, I like how he did that haiku, but in brackets with extra syllables, is that's a very funny joke. Um, so, at least, you know, he's, he's pathetic and a loser, but I find him funny, at least. Um, okay, let's move on to the next and final episode we're doing in this video, episode 552. Break of romance start! Kokumada kitaze! Recap Rubik's. Here we go! Yahoo! Okay, there's the first cube. Done. Now, let's see if we can do the second cube.
Damn, I got to around the same point as I got to last time on the second cube. I'm consistent. I'm nothing if not consistent. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, Jiroshi. <laughs> Wasn't exactly the most genius of tricks. Damn. Ah, oh, fuck you. Incorrect. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. She ain't dead. Mm -hmm. Yep, he knows about her power, so... Oh no! Oh. They don't even mention Megalo? <laughs> this is bullshit. Things are going very well for Horty. Oh, <laughs> nice shot there. <laughs> Just cut out Shiroji's face. Yeah, you should be concerned about them. Okay. What are we cutting to now? Oh, we're not cutting away. We're actually still here. Oh my god. Oh god, that's so fucked. Oh my god, there's so many. A hundred thousand outlaws. Okay. Well, I think Zoro could slice through like 95,000 of them at least. <laughs> like, you guys see Zoro in Whiskey Peak? And he wasn't even nearly as strong back then. God. I mean, I hate to say it, but Charlie, Charlie, it's partly your fault for your prediction on the straw hats. It made this situation worse. Charlie. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> You're not impactful enough, Hori. Yeah, she would have predicted if he does actually take over the island. But your legacy is nothing, loser. Oh, yep. Just gonna try to us. Jesus! Just kill her. Jesus, man, what do you have about beautiful women against beautiful women? Wait. What did that say? <laughs> Well, you don't. You're not gonna. Oh, here we go. There you go. He admit it. Oh my god, he admit it. Oh god, Shirohoshi might fucking... I mean, Shirohoshi is still here. She can still use her power, right? She just used it by yelling. Not that she knows how to, but... Oh, okay, so he's the one who started the fire. 
And then, of course, Hordy's the one who pulled the trigger. He wouldn't trust a human to pull off the assassination. Oh. There's that awesome visual again. Yeah. Funny how he always talks about humans being the ones to trick fishmen. And yet he doesn't hold his word to humans. Neptune's gonna fucking destroy you. Oh, Jesus. Never mind. You might destroy Neptune. No, she wasn't. And if she was, that's fine, because I like characters that are annoying, apparently. <laughs> Oh I wonder what Shirohoshi's gonna do. Is she gonna. Is she gonna call some Sea Kings here? Because it seems like a bad plan from Horty. Oh my god, he's really rubbing it in. Trying to show off that he's so important. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> She's like, that was super fucking obvious, dude. Noah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What the fuck is going on? Is he throwing Noah at Shirohoshi? <laughs> Oh my god. I, I like that. I was like, is he throwing Noah at Shirohoshi? And he goes, I'm throwing Noah at Shirohoshi! Jesus. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Um, pretty decent episode. I mean, yeah, the pace is slowed down now, but the, the, uh, actual events of the episode were pretty decent. I'm glad they didn't drag out the idea of Horty being the killer d too long, because now I, um, like, now I know that, you know, I'm not just, like, waiting around for that time where, like, oh, they're gonna reveal that sooner or later. Um, uh, by the way, did we know that, um, Charlie was Charlie was uh siblings with Arlong is this is this actually like when they say brother here are they actually saying like related brother or are they saying um brother as in uh you know cuz they they call each other brother sometimes as well as like a term of affection um but saying it specifically to her i feel like means that he is her brother um did I know that? Because <laughs> I don't remember that. But maybe I just forgot. Maybe they did already say that and I just completely forgot about that. Um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this... Uh, I, <laughs> it's it's funny and annoying that the episode starts with, like, Shirohoshi falling for just, like, a balloon of her dad. <laughs> There's just, like, a balloon in the shape of him. Uh, honestly, a pretty well done balloon that she just immediately falls for and um and gets caught up in it. it it it's sad though and it sucks but thing is like in my mind shirahoshi can speak to sea kings that's her power right and so she's shown off that power by being able to scream um and call out for the sea kings to come and then Hordy says like she's got a dangerous power so we need to keep her in check but then they tie her up but they don't gag her and they, he also like taunts her in front of her to, it's almost like he's trying to get her to use the power, but then that's gonna maybe kill him, you know? Like it seems, seems reckless, but I understand. I, I think I understand why he's doing all this taunting because what Charlie did was make him feel insignificant, make him feel like he doesn't matter. Like, that, you know, you're doing all of this, but ultimately, like, you're going to be forgotten by history. You're not going to make a difference. Nothing's going to change. Um, because you're just 
you know, you're, you're just a speck on the radar. When Straw Hat Luffy, he's the special one, you know? He's the one who's actually going to make some sort of change here. And so Hordy's like, you think I'm not significant? Like, the most significant thing that's happened to this island in a long time, which is Otohime's assassination, was because of me. Like, he, he wants to show off how, how he's always been important to this island. So I get why he's doing that. It just seems strange that he's that he's doing it in front of Shirohoshi and not worried about her power. So I wonder why that is. Um, but uh, but the whole like Van der Decken throwing the Noah. It's cool that they're actually bringing the Noah into it because I did think the Noah was pretty cool. And uh, like I had you know talked about it in previous episodes how it's a cool idea um, and it's a cool design. And then, uh, but I thought it was just going to be like an, uh, some world building backdrop, you know? I didn't think they were actually going to use it, but actually throwing that at Shiroshi is pretty fucking insane. Um, and so, like, and also that makes me think, like, Vanda Deccan's power is slightly more sh powerful than I expected it to be. Because I thought that, like, yes, I know that if he throws kind of anything, then that thing is going to go towards whatever. But to me, I thought, like, you would have to at least be able to move it first. Like, if you can get it to move, then you can, like, get it to... Then you can throw it, essentially. So, I thought, like, the Noah, that's too big, you know? You, you wouldn't be able to throw a house. I mean, like, some people can throw houses. You know, Arlong could flip a house. But I don't think Van der Decken can throw a house. So, um... So, I thought that would have been his limit. Is, like, what I can actually, like, pick up. If I can pick something up, then I can throw it. But it turns out he can just touch it, essentially, and that counts as throwing it, because that's fucking strong, man. That's insane. But yeah, anyway, um, pretty good episode. Don't have much to talk about. I imagine this is what people talk about when they're talking about the pace, but I still enjoyed it. I still had a good time. So thank you for joining me. Make sure to support this video if you can, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Go to my Patreon account for full-length early access and exclusive videos, and I have a YouTube membership which you can join down below for two videos early on this channel. So you can either join my Patreon for the next 20 or so episodes, or you can join the YouTube membership uh, for the next two edited videos, or you can join both and get extra edited videos and early full-length videos. It's up to you. But uh, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.